Hi everyone, welcome to or back to my channel. I'm Sally and this is my channel, Secret Life of a Seamstress, where I love to talk all about sewing and making clothes. Thank you for joining me today and I hope you're all doing really well. So in today's video, I'm gonna be sharing with you some patterns from my stash that I have had for quite a long time, but I've never got around to sewing. So recently I had a bit of a sort out of my patterns. I try to do this every year or maybe a bit more often than every year. <laughs> um, and just to keep everything sort of under control, get everything a bit more organized and to maybe donate or give away any patterns. But I think I'm never gonna sew. So I've recently done that, given everything a bit of a tidy up. And I came across about seven, I think, patterns that I really like. But yeah, as I say, I've just never got around to sewing them. So I thought I'd share them with you today and I really hope that you will help me to decide what to make next. Before I get started, just in case you're interested in what I'm wearing today, I'm wearing my Whitmore cardigan, which I knitted. This pattern is by Amy Loudon of Taylor S Studios. It's a pattern that I absolutely love to knit, but I do keep meaning to actually change the buttons on this one because you might notice that in the middle of this video, <laughs> it kind of pops open. So if I ever wear the cardigan buttoned up like this, I just have to be careful because the buttons are actually quite small for the buttonholes and sometimes it can come all unbuttoned and I don't even realise. Okay, so let's get started. So the first pattern that I found that I've never got around to sewing is this one. It's the famous McCall's 7969. This has been such a popular pattern, hasn't it? There's been so many versions of this all over social media. I love it on other people. But something has been stopping me from making this dress. And I think it's just that I'm a little bit worried that it's gonna to be too oversized. So in case you haven't seen this pattern, it's a really nice, um, I don't know, it's kind of a vintagey style, I suppose. It's got a faux wrap style bodice, big puffy balloon sleeves, and you can make it with just a sort of a gathered single skirt like the model is wearing in the pattern image, or you can make it with a small ruffle to the bottom of the hem, or a big tear as a maxi dress. If you don't wanna have the balloon sleeves, you can also make a ruffle sleeve, or you can make just a sort of um, fluted sleeve as well. So there are lots of different options that you can sew. I really do love the look of this dress. As I say, I've almost made it a few times now. I had a lovely monochrome viscose fabric that I ended up making a Lyra dress from. But I did actually wonder whether to use that fabric for this pattern, and I just didn't, something stopped me. So if you've made this pattern, let me know how you got on with it and let me know if you think that I should sew it. Another lovely dress pattern that I had in my stash and I've never sewn is this one. It's the 1940s tea dress by Sew Over It. I actually bought this from Minerva when they were selling off all of the old style Sew Over It patterns. This was one that I didn't have and it was one that I just wanted to have really in my collection of the vintage style Sew Over It patterns. But I do really like the style of this dress and I actually think it's quite on trend at the moment. If you look at the line drawings, which I'll try and pop in now, it's got that sort of um, gathered bust. Then there's a nice fitted waistband with princess seams. I think you'd call them princess seams. And then the skirt hangs down in a kind of fitted panelled style skirt. <laughs> On the pattern image, they're actually wearing the dress as a mini length, but I think you could quite easily lengthen this dress and maybe have it with a split in or something. And that would be quite similar to lots of different styles that I've seen around on the high street. So I am kind of interested to play around with this pattern and maybe hack it a little bit and see what I can make from it. Let me know again if you have made this pattern and let me know what you thought of it and let me know if you think it's something that I should try. It does include an invisible zip, <laughs> like most sew over it dress patterns do actually. I hate invisible zips. They're probably the worst thing for me to sew. They're really, really scary to me and I just don't like doing them. I'd much rather do buttonholes. So I think that was one of the things that was actually putting me off of trying this pattern. I did get it out to make it last summer was put off by the zip and then never made it. So yeah, let me know what you think. I also have this really pretty pattern. This is a blouse pattern from New Look and it has lots of different styles. It's a wrap blouse and all four of the versions tie at your hip with a kind of peplum bottom. But there are different versions or styles of the top that you can make. So two of the versions of the blouse actually include a lovely ruffle, which comes all the way down the wraps. You can make it with some large floaty balloon sleeves or a fluted sleeve, or you can have it nice and simple just with some sleeve cuffs or tabs or whatever they are. <laughs> so they're not actually sleeves, they're kind of grown on sleeve bindings I guess. You'll see what I mean from the image of the pattern. So again this is one that I've very nearly sewn in the past. I think it would be really lovely just in a floaty viscose or something or even like a solid 
for this coat. It'd be so pretty for summer, just warm with jeans like the model's wearing here. It is quite fitted actually. It does include some back darts as well. So yeah, quite a fitted blouse. I guess you could leave out the darts if you wanted it to be a bit more oversized. And I see that the wrap front pieces are actually gathered into a yoke at the shoulders as well. So lots of pretty details in this and it's a very me kind of top. So I don't know why I've not made that yet. So again, just let me know if you've made it or if you have any tips or advice and let me know how you think I should sew this one. Another lovely pattern that I have in my stash is this one by The Little Tailoress. It's actually the same designer, Amy Loudon, that designed the Whitmore cardigan, which is what I'm wearing. But yeah, I actually brought this pattern similar to my Sew Over It one because she was selling off all of her paper patterns half price. I don't think she does paper patterns at all anymore. This one is called the Emmeline Tee. So this is a really simple style or t-shirt pattern. I believe it can be sewn from a woven or a knit fabric so it's really versatile. It has quite a wide sort of scoop around neck and you can make it completely boxy and sleeveless or you can make it with raglan sleeves or just grown on sleeves. So yeah this has always been a t-shirt that I've wanted to make. I actually forgot that I had this in my stash because as you'll probably know I have been looking for a t-shirt pattern for quite some time. I completely forgot that I had this <laughs> so I could have tried this one and just seen how it works and um, yeah it's definitely one that I do need to try in the future and I think it's great that you can actually make it in woven or knit fabric. It makes it really versatile and it will give it a different look every time so yeah, another one that I must sew at some point. So sticking with the t-shirt theme, I also have this one, which is the Era Top, and this is by Ploen Patterns. I have another pattern by Ploen Patterns, which is the Tyra Trousers. And I absolutely love that pattern. I've made a couple of versions of those trousers and I really like them. I was actually kindly sent this pattern along with the Tyra Trousers, and for some reason, I've just never got around to making this t-shirt. But it's a really lovely pattern and it has some really interesting details to it as well. So you can actually make this as a really simple t-shirt just with drop shoulders and three quarter length sleeves and a nice rounded neck. Or you can add in this yoke detail so you can see that it's got a nice curved yoke at the front. And then the back yoke is split into two pieces and it actually ties at the back of your neck which I think is a really pretty detail. And it says that it's suitable for going to the gym or loungewear or wearing with a pair of jeans or a pencil skirt or shorts. Again, I think this would be a really nice one to sew up for summertime. And it's just got a few things in it that make it different to your standard normal t-shirt. Another pattern that I have that's just waiting to be sewn up is this one. It's a dress pattern called the Moneta Midi Dress by Stylark. I think I've had this for a good few years and I've actually meant to sew it every single summertime and again I've just not got around to it. I think off the top of my head you can actually sew this from a woven or a knit fabric again. So it makes it really versatile. It's a lovely oversized floaty style summer dress. I think the top is actually fully lined so it's like bagged out at the top and then the skirts are just gathered into the top for a nice floaty feel and it has side pockets as well. In my stash of fabrics I've actually got a nice stripy viscose jersey that I have lined up all ready to go for this pattern so I really must make it this year. I think this pattern has been quite popular recently on Instagram so let me know if you've sewn it. I think it might come out quite oversized which again was something that was putting me off a little bit. I think I was a little bit concerned about the sizing and whether it would swamp me being quite short. Um, but yeah if you have seen this pattern then let me know how you got on with it and let me know any tips or advice that you might have. And then lastly I have this one which is the Anderson knit dress. I brought this a couple of years ago again I think because I was looking for a nice oversized sort of sweatshirt dress style pattern that I could wear with leggings and I was all set to make this one up and then I discovered and bought the South Bank sweater dress by Nina Lee Patterns and I loved that one so much that I ended up sewing quite a few different versions of the South Bank dress and then this pattern just kind of got forgotten. But I actually really like this sweatshirt dress. It's sewn in different panels, so it's great for color blocking. And it also includes some inseam pockets as well. So it's lovely and cozy and casual for summertime. And I like how they've styled it again in the pattern images just with bare legs and trainers. I think it makes it look really great for spring and summertime. I have heard on the grapevine again that this one comes out a little bit oversized. So I'm wondering whether or not I need to size down when I make this one. I definitely don't want it to be too big. So again, I'd love any tips or tricks or advice that you might be able to give me if you sewn up this pattern. Definitely another one that I really want to make. 
but I don't know how much of this I'm going to get around to this year because there's quite a lot on my list for spring and summer already. So that's it, just a quick video for today. Seven patterns that I've never sewn from my stash. I'd love to know in the comments which one you think I should sew next and whichever one wins. I think I'll put this as a vote on my community tab actually. Whichever pattern comes out on top, maybe I will film as a sew along. So if there is any pattern in particular that you like out of that little collection, do let me know and perhaps I will film it for you. And as I say, I'd love to know any tips or tricks or any advice about any of the patterns that I've shared. Let me know whether you think they will suit me and whether or not they will work for me and whether I will enjoy sewing them. Thanks so much for watching everyone. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I do post sewing videos every Sunday at 8 a.m. and I'd love to have you as a subscriber. If you have enjoyed this video, then please do give it a like as well. Otherwise, take care everyone. Look out for that community tab vote. <laughs> Take care and I'll look forward to seeing you in another video soon. Bye.